This video answers the question, how does Renaissance Technologies beat the market? How does the Medallion Fund generate such massive returns, outperforming the market, yet uncorrelated with it? Even finance professors have struggled to explain this, until now. In under 10 minutes, I'll reveal the eight key secrets to their success. Disclaimer, I've never worked at Renaissance. This is based on my quant experience and Zuckerman's book, The Man Who Solved the Market. The first secret is their statistical edge. The book says they only need to win 51% of the time. Their secret, a tiny edge, repeated thousands of times, compounding into massive returns. Let's dive deeper. In statistics, this is called expected value, or EV. It's simply the average result of your wins and losses combined. An edge exists when EV is greater than zero. Here's an example. Say you win 51% of the time with an average gain of 2% and you lose 49% of the time with an average loss of 1.9%. Put that together and you get a tiny, small, but positive EV, about 0.08% or eight basis points. Can you make money with this tiny edge? Let's see. If we only make 10 trades, each worth $1,000, we can see that we're not really building any profit with this edge. In fact, we only won five out of those 10 trades. Not really anything to get excited about. Now let's see what happens when we increase the number of trades. Here's the biggest takeaway from this video, so stay with me. If we make a trade every minute, that adds up to 1,440 trades in a single day. And check this out. We're building profit at a rapid pace, even though we're only winning about 51% of the time. It sounds counterintuitive, but with just a tiny edge and a high frequency of trades, you can actually generate incredibly stable returns. The second secret is the law of large numbers. We didn't make any money with just 10 trades because the results hadn't yet converged to the EV. On this chart, the x-axis shows the number of trades and the y-axis shows the sampled EV. As we make more trades, the results get closer to the EV. Once it converges, it hovers around it. That's why making lots of trades matter. The third secret is that they hold trades on a daily time scale. They're not high frequency, so they're not holding positions for seconds or minutes, but they're also not long-term investors like pension funds holding for years. Instead, they make bets on where prices will move the next day, both up and down. The fourth secret is frequency scaling. They forecast on a daily horizon, but instead of just making one bet a day, they use high frequency data to place multiple trades throughout the day. More trades mean more chances to compound their edge. The fifth secret is that they don't analyze prices. They analyze price movements, focusing on how prices behave, not exact numbers. In econometrics, the focus is on price movements. Modeling movements makes the data more statistically reliable and helps to model trading behavior. For example, here we're looking at log returns and you can clearly see the mean reverting a secret I'll cover later. Another benefit is risk management. By modeling movements, you can estimate extreme price swings, crucial for managing drawdowns and using leverage. The sixth secret is that they have access to the order book. Price data alone doesn't give much of an edge for intraday trading, but the order book does. It's at the heart of every market and shows the liquidity that allows buying and selling. It has two sides, bids, which are prices buyers are willing to pay, and asks, which are the prices sellers are willing to accept. The book is constantly updating, with the best bid and best ask always at the top. The edge comes from analyzing how supply and demand shift inside this book. For example, Traders often watch for imbalances between volume and liquidity as potential signals. The seventh secret is mean reversion, but not in the way you might expect. 
the basic idea is predicting if an asset is overbought or oversold and likely to revert back. If you Google it, you'll see this. When price drops too far below the moving average, the yellow line here, it's a buy signal. When the price rises too far above, it's a sell signal. But this isn't how professionals do mean reversion. That's just a heuristic, a simple rule of thumb, not a real model, so it has no forecasting power. They use statistical models to predict whether prices will revert based on reversionary signals. The model takes an input and predicts how much a price is likely to move up or down in the future. An example of a reversionary signal is order flow versus liquidity. When a market order comes in, it crosses the ask side of the book because there must be a seller willing to sell. For example, a buy order for two units hits the best ask and reducing the quantity from three to one. If a buy order for 15 units arrives, it crosses multiple levels of the book, transacting at different prices and pushing the price up. This is how large orders move markets, and this is what Renaissance is watching, because it could indicate that an asset is overbought or oversold. Visualize the imbalance like a seesaw. If buying pressure exceeds the liquidity on the book, the price moves up but a bigger imbalance can actually increase the chance the price will drop in the next few days. Conversely, if selling pressure on the book exceeds buying, the price moves down, which could signal reversion in the next few days. The greater the imbalance, the more likely the price is to revert over the next few days. Here's what the model is calculating. It's estimating the expected future log return, say for tomorrow or the next few days, based on the current ratio of buying volume to ask side liquidity. We take the log of this ratio to better model the imbalance. It turns the signal negative when there's more liquidity than buying flow. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just using a simple linear regression, like y equals wx plus b. For mean reversion, the weight w is negative and it flips the sign of the log ratio. So if the log ratio is positive, meaning more buying than liquidity, the model predicts a negative return. The price will likely go down. And if there's more liquidity than buying, the signal will be negative and it predicts the price will go up. The eighth secret is that they have excellent execution. Thanks to the IBM people they recruited. Before they joined, the equity system had good models but poor execution because the software was poorly built. Execution is what takes the model's prediction and actually sends the orders. This is a key lesson. Even the best model is useless without good execution. You can think of returns as the edge multiplied by execution. If execution is below par, it can wipe out the edge and lead to poor returns. Here's my model for more videos. You subscribe, you like, maybe drop a comment, and boom, the model turns that into new content. Thanks so much for watching and for your continued support.